Before we get started, I just wanna let you know that I'm giving you two ways to win a brand new unopened iPhone 16 Pro. If you're in the US, you can enter our sweepstakes. There's no purchase necessary. And if you're a member of Pocket Filmmaker or full-time filmmaker, you can enter our iPhone one take video contest. I just wanna see your best one take video shot on the iPhone. Rules and then how to enter are gonna be down below in the description. So if you want a chance to win, go check that out. All right, enjoy the video. It's iPhone season. Kind of the best and the worst time of the year because there's a lot of hype around the new devices coming out. And then after about three days, you just get sick hearing about it, which is why, to be honest, we didn't really bother making a video. Well, okay, that's one of the reasons. The main reason really is because there wasn't really much to talk about with this new update. Last year we did an iPhone 14 versus iPhone 15 comparison. And I mean, there's a lot of differences. We had ProRes log that came to the iPhone, which is honestly what's unlocked our ability to make cinematic content with these devices. There's a few other minor updates I think that came with that as well. But this year there's just not much happening. And the internet as usual has been kind of a whirlwind of opinions. Some say it's a great update. Some are like upset saying that Apple doesn't innovate anymore. And to be honest, I kind of just put myself in the middle. It was a pretty underwhelming update for me, but regardless, I still think there's a few good reasons why it's worth upgrading to the 16, no matter what generation you're coming from. First off, the screen is just a little bit bigger. You go from 6.7 inches on the Pro Max to 6.9 inches. Honestly, after going from the 15 Pro Max as my daily for about a year and then going to the 16 Pro Max, you don't notice a difference. It's not noticeably larger. So if you're considering upgrading for the size difference, don't. You're, you're not really going to tell, at least if you're coming from a 15 Pro Max. Battery life has also improved on this new generation. To be honest, from just normal daily use, I don't really pay too much attention to the battery. I've never had to like plug my phone in as an emergency in the middle of the day to keep it from dying. But I do think that the battery is actually going to play a huge part with ProRes log specific recording. Gathering all that data, using your camera in that way does drain the battery pretty quickly. It's noticeable on the 15 Pro. And so while we haven't shot a ton on the 16 Pro Max, I do think that extra battery is gonna be really nice. So that's not one of the three reasons why I think the 16 Pro is worth it, but I will give that an honorable mention. By the way, if you wanna learn how we actually shoot like this on the iPhone, I have a full course called Pocket Filmmaker that walks you through everything. It's only 47 bucks. You get to learn all the settings that I use, how I color grade, how I compose my shots, how I edit them, plus a bunch of bonuses like the LUTs that help me get this look that you're seeing right now in the sample footage. No sponsor on this video, just a shameless plug. If you like filming on your iPhone, Go check that out. We also got an updated styles and tone control for photos inside of the camera app. Play with this a little bit. I think it's kind of nice, a uh, great little update, definitely software oriented. So I'm not gonna pretend like it's super unique to the 16, but nice little update. So number one, and maybe this isn't a huge surprise, 4K 120. This is honestly very, very good coming from an iPhone. If you also use professional cameras like this, like you're aware that 4K 120 actually isn't all that common, even in three, four, five, six thousand dollar cameras. You don't see it all that much. So to put it inside of an iPhone, that's a pretty big deal. Now, Apple says that you do need an external SSD to be able to shoot 4K 120 in the native camera app. That is true. You do have to plug in an SSD, but in a third party camera app, like the Moment app, you can shoot 4K 120 directly to the phone which is huge because normally just day to day, I don't have an SSD on my phone. I don't really want to have an SSD on my phone. So to be able to do 120 without it is pretty great. Now the 4K 120 in just your standard color profile, like you're, you're shooting with Apple's color and saturation and contrast, everything just baked in, I think looks just average. It, it works for everyday stuff. Most people who use their iPhone are gonna use that normal mode. But I think the 4K 120 really shines specifically in ProRes log with a really good color grade on it. 
If you want, you can actually get the LUT that I'm using on this ProRes log footage for free. I'm just gonna link it below. I have one LUT that you can try. It's, it's usually my go-to. It works on pretty much any iPhone log footage, or you can actually get a bunch more LUTs inside of Pocket Filmmaker with your membership. Now, the second reason, in my opinion at least, to upgrade to the iPhone 16 Pro is the updates they've made on the 0.5X lens. On the 15 Pro, it was a 12 megapixel sensor. Not a big deal, honestly, shooting on your phone, and especially in photo, it looks fine. In video, I could probably say the same thing. It performed just fine. But for me, the 1X and the 0.5X are my most used lenses. The 1X lens has the biggest sensor on this phone. It performs really good in low light, considering how small it is. And while the size of the sensor on the 0.5X hasn't changed from the 15 to the 16, it has four times as many megapixels and it seems to perform quite a bit better in low light. Like I said, you're not gonna notice a huge difference in daylight, but if you look at these two comparison clips in the shadows specifically, you can see on the 16 Pro Max, there's probably about half as much noise. So if you're like me and you use the 0.5X pretty much as often as you use the 1X, that's gonna be a great little update. All the other lenses, internally at least, haven't changed. Like if you see a side-by-side -side between a 15 and a 16 on the 1X lens, it's probably gonna look identical. The only reason you might see a difference is actually because of my third reason to upgrade, the anti-reflective coating. What's kind of funny is that that was almost in the subtext, like the anti-reflective coating was just a minor mention. And I get it, but I also don't because iPhones for years have been notoriously bad when it comes to reflections on your lens. So if you compare the two and you point both of these directly at the sun, first off, you're gonna see a lot less light spill, a lot less like haziness essentially coming from your light source. So maybe you don't care, maybe you're not as nitpicky as I am, but I mean, even if that was the only update, I would still consider the upgrade. <laughs> so I guess the question you're probably asking yourself if you haven't already purchased one of these is, is it actually worth the upgrade? If you film a lot of stuff like I do on your phone, specifically in ProRes, you're trying to make it look cinematic, more professional. And 4K 120, the anti-reflective coating and the better 0.5X lens is important to you, then yes, 100%, I think it's worth the upgrade. If you don't use any of that stuff and you're already on the iPhone 15, then probably not. I would just wait and see what they do next year. Now, if you're coming from an older iPhone, like maybe an 11, 12, 13, and you've yet to experience ProRes log. You should have updated last year, to be honest, but at this point, you might as well get the 16 Pro. And in case you're wondering, I do actually have a lot of gripes with this thing. Like, I still think that the three reasons I gave you are good enough to upgrade, but camera control was just so disappointing. When I saw that in the keynote, genuinely, it got me so excited. The way they illustrated it, it looked super useful. But after actually having this thing for a week, it's not that great, I'm not gonna lie. It's actually kind of annoying. It made me miss my 15. I kept accidentally pushing that button. And yeah, I know you can actually change the settings, so it's a double click to activate it, open the camera app, but it's just not that great. There's a few reasons why. Number one, it's in such an awkward spot. It, it really, truly is. If you're shooting horizontally, it's not too bad. It's more or less where your finger is gonna rest anyway when you're holding your phone. But in horizontal mode, at least on the Pro Max, it's too low. I feel like the phone's literally gonna slide out of my hand while I'm using it. It's just, it's a very unnatural position. The camera control is also just really finicky. Like as much as I want to have a nice smooth motion, that quick light double tap to switch between different settings, the dial, whatnot, I swear it just, it never works the way it's supposed to. And maybe there's a learning curve. Maybe I need to give it a little bit longer and, and try and figure it out. But with an Apple product especially, there shouldn't really be much of a learning curve. It's easier to just tap the screen with your thumb and have the exact same settings. If this thing was saving me time, then I'd love it, but it's honestly just slowing me down. All right, then my last gripe with camera control is the fact that it does not actually have all that much functionality. At least in the native camera app, it, it just, it doesn't do much. I was under the impression that I could use it for focus, like manually adjusting my focus, specifically in video mode. 
manually adjusting ISO or shutter speed or maybe even aperture in the native camera app at least. I just, I would have thought that if you're bringing camera control to a pro version of an iPhone, you're gonna give the user the ability to natively manually control your camera's settings. Now there are third party apps and I know for sure that the Moment app right now does allow you to control those settings with camera control. So shout out Moment, good job for being one of the first, if not the first developer to like use that camera control in a camera app. So there's my thoughts one week later, upgrade, don't upgrade, totally up to you. I do think though, at least the 15 Pro with ProRes is worth it. And don't forget, I'm giving you guys two chances to win an iPhone 15 Pro. These are unopened, brand new. If you're in the US, you can enter the sweepstakes to win this one, no purchase necessary, anybody can join. And if you're a pocket filmmaker or full-time filmmaker member, you can actually enter the contest to win this one. Just send me your best one take video shot on the iPhone. All the rules for both the contest and the sweepstakes are below, so go check that out. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.